Welcome to Stitch and Stuff. I'm Sarah. I'm Kim. And we're glad you're joining us today to talk about our cross stitching and other stuff. We do not have any little girls with us today. They're currently playing in the mud in our neighbor's <laughs> big pond that's filling up with irrigation water, which means we'll soon be able to water the yard much better. But um, when it first starts to fill up, it's just like just mud and they make mud slides and they just get covered in mud and then they rinse off before they're even allowed to come in the house. They're in their swimsuits, actually. They're not even gonna wear clothes. It's so much easier to wash up. So they wanted to do that today. And I said, that is great. So that just means they aren't here. Enjoy it now while you can. We're here, we made it. Yeah. Sarah will try not to yawn. Oh, man. I, and I will try not to mess with this mop. <laughs> I have a haircut on Tuesday. It's really bugging me, by the way, guys, today. It's really bugging me. Ask Sarah how much it's bugging me. Well, it's always hard to do your hair when you travel. So they were over here, but we just didn't have a chance to film before everybody needed to go home. Um, so today is Sunday, April 18th. And yesterday was my husband's birthday. And next week is Millie's birthday. And the couple days after that is Rosie's birthday. So we have it. Boom, boom, boom. Two weeks of birthday mania. I am always exhausted by the end of April. It's a lot of birthday. So this year for the first time, I said to all of my family, why don't you come celebrate with us? And so everybody except for Cass and Andrew, who stayed with baby Junie, um, who's still in the hospital, everybody else was able to come over and we had a fun filled weekend with no time to last you but we had a birthday palooza but anyways it's hard to do your hair i think when you're like my hair old. reacts differently at your house because your water is super different than our water so and my hair is weird at your house like it just won't do because of the humidity over here humidity it just is weirdly flat and frizzy like it just yeah. is weird so you'd think we lived in opposite parts of the country or something i know Instead of the of the state. But anyway, yeah. It's a busy weekend. We're both tired. And but we're doing it. We're doing our foster. Jesse's watching the Mariners game in the other room. So I'm relegated to the guest room, which is fine actually. It's not too bad in here. Yeah. yeah. And he's very happy because he loves the Mariners. Baseball is his jam. And so for his birthday, I gave him a subscription to the MLB.tv. Mm -hmm whatever that is, so that he can actually watch all the games. It's the He's only one happy that really, in our family, is the only devoted Mariner guy. The rest of us are like. Yep, but he loves baseball. He does. And God bless him. Somebody's got to love them. I like Somebody. it. Yeah. They're doing good. They're playing against the Astros. And the Astros are getting booed a ton because they're in Seattle because a couple of years ago, I don't know if you know, you probably don't follow baseball news, but they were cheating. Oh, yeah, they, they had a camera set up so that they could, yeah. yeah. So this is the first time they've played in front of a crowd since then. So the Mariners fans are making sure to let them know what they think of that. <laughs> it's very funny. I'm sorry if you're an Astros fan, but we're like. The thing the thing I have to say about the Mariners is they're, they always do great at the beginning of the season. Oh, it, we yeah. all have high hopes to be in the season. Yeah. By the end of August, there is no hope. They are down. <laughs> so if they hang on, it would be amazing. The last time I really remember a really, really great season was when Sam was born. Like they had almost, another good one after that. Yeah. And then it just fell apart again. Yeah. They just could yeah. never get that magic back. And so it's, you know, yeah. He's hung in. Jesse deserves a World Series. He's hung in there. He does. <laughs> yes. He certainly does. Just like my baby Sam was getting married in July, deserved a Super Bowl win because he was a diehard Seahawk fan when they were in the bottom for decades. <laughs> so, same thing. Yeah. Sports. Sports. It's that nice that they're letting people fun. in, that people on the stands. There are people in the stands? Yes, I'm pretty sure it's pretty sparsely situated. Yeah. I don't know how they're, yeah. But there are people in the stands. There's definitely fans there. Yeah, well, I know my other son and his wife and Sam have season tickets to the Sounders, which is our soccer team. And they were being um, 
notified that they were going to be allowed to come to games or, you know, staggering season ticket holders. And they're picking where they're going to sit like in pods and stuff. So uh, yeah, they're doing the best they can. Yeah. So, and, oh my gosh, Sam's in line for his shot. Oh, good. Me. Oh, good. Yep. I just got that text too. <laughs> So sorry, he's the last one of our family. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Jesse and I get our second vaccine tomorrow and Wednesday, like alternately. Yeah. So then we'll be fully. And vaccinated. in full disclosure, our other son Andrew, Junie's daddy, got his second one this afternoon. Oh really? And he came in and said, "We got. We were just coming. We had just gotten home from Sarah's when they were just coming home from the hospital and some grocery shopping." And he was kind of walking around and he goes, yeah, I just feel really out of it. And I go, Are you just tired? And he goes, yeah, kind of, but just kind of like foggy. And I, I have heard of people that kind of have that brain fog slash possible fatigue as one of the symptoms. I said, you'll be better tomorrow. Just go lay down, take it easy. Not tomorrow, but Tuesday probably. Oh yeah. But I don't think it's lasting very long. Um, yeah. So but I've heard too. That's, he was fine. He just said it was weird. It was a weird feeling. Like mm -hmm. he didn't want to drive home from the store because he just mm -hmm. felt kind of spacey. Little, yeah, spacey. So, but anyway, he'll be fine and we'll yeah. be good to go. We can celebrate all we want. Yay. Not that we haven't already been. Well, we've been pretty mm -hmm. pot. This is our little pod. Our pod. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to do featured friends first. Yeah, I don't have, I did not, I have no finishes and I didn't bring in an old finish. I have finishes, so I could just do my finishes. Okay, I did show this one, right, last week. That's when I was all done. Okay, so I want yeah. to, so I have a finish. This is Lily Violet Recolto di Primavera, which I think means springtime basket. And I've been working on it for a while, just slowly. And this week it is all, well, not fully finished, but all finished being stitched. And I stitched it on Ada, probably 18 count. I told you those flowers would go fast. And they did go pretty fast. I kind of winged it on some of the stems, the long anyway, so. That turned out so cute. It's one of my favorite ones I've did in the last couple of years. Mine's in the other room. It's a pillow. I did a pillow out of it. I know. Well, yours is what made me really want to do it because yours turned out so cute. I think I'm going to do it into a little pillow too. Probably just something yeah. really simple. Yeah. I love it. I think it's so cute. And scream. Just, kind of, just kind of screams and sweet yeah it was my first I had just found her mm -hmm. I think that pattern that popped up and that's how I found her in general really, yeah but it's actually two designs I think yeah maybe I don't have the design in here with me I didn't bring it I just brought in the finish but so they are so sweet it was really fun to stitch and really sweet and I love the colors on it I like how vibrant they are and I'm yeah. so happy to have another little finish yeah. So this week, we are going to, we, so if you haven't watched this lately, we've started doing something we call Featured Friends, and we just do a little sharing of somebody else's stitching if they send us an email with pictures and then a description of it. So um, this week, we are featuring Steph Lee. Steph, she's also Ms. Crown on 7th on Instagram, so you can find her. It's Stephanie. And um, she says she's, she heard our call for featuring makes or whips. So she put her three stitches that are finished, one for each year that she's been stitching. So oh. I'm gonna go ahead and insert those here with the titles.
Clouds Factory. And she made that for her youngest sixth grade teacher in 2019 as an end of the year thank you gift. The sixth grade classes had decorated their classrooms in the Harry Potter theme, which that's oh, so beautiful. So, that's so cute. How great yeah. is that? What a fun gift. On the Glitter House by Country Cottage Needleworks, she used Rick Rack for the first time for her cross stitch finishing, which I don't think I've ever used it. But it turned out so cute with the yeah. Rick Rack on that pillow. That makes me feel really inspired. Yeah, I'm wondering if you're going to do more of the Glitter House's stuff. Yeah, let us know if you're going to stitch more of those. I have never done those. I don't really like stitching houses. I get bored really fast. So yeah, with the house in a big design, I'll do it. But it, yeah, yours turned out really cute. I love that blue. And then the, I love, I love the pastel of I do pastel like, series. Is so I do cute. too. Yeah. If I was gonna stitch houses, it would probably be those. Yeah, those pieces are cute because of the pastel, I think. Mm -hmm. There's a hawk run that's like farms that have a lot of houses on it too. I would maybe stitch that. Yeah. But in general, I'm not really drawn to a lot of like the cottage, the, you know, country cottage. Yeah, little houses. Even though I think they're super cute. I just don't like stitching houses. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the roof. It's like you me. are with borders. I am with houses. Like, ugh. I know. My hawk run hollow, by the way, has a house on it on the next Christmas one. Does it have a border too? A border and a house. Ooh, that's a winner. Yes, anyway. The last one was a frosted pumpkin stitchery. And she says, I love their kawaii aesthetic. Cutesy, man, that's cute. The Frankenstein. Frankenstein. I'm wondering if that's one of the first things she stitched because I feel like I remember her talking about that, showing that one on Instagram. I, I'm thinking. Yeah, so I'm like, well done. Those are adorable and finished super cute. And she hasn't been stitching very long. But she said three years. Well, that Marauder's Map was 2019. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that falls in the order of like which one she stitched. But she said she did one for each of her three years of stitching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's been stitching three years. Yeah, three years. And I, I, I know Steph from blogging and other mm -hmm. ventures and she quilt, no, doesn't quilt. She does card making, she knits, and she also is learning to sew. Mm. So she's pretty, pretty diverse and talented. Really, yeah, really talented. So thank you for sending those and sharing those so that we can share them with other people too. Thanks, so if Steph. you're watching, I think Steph is the last one I've gotten. So if you have something that you would love for us to share and feature here and just, mm -hmm. I don't know, just enjoy other people's Steph. stitching, email it to us at the email address in the description box below. And we would love to feature that. I'm uh, just doing it kind of in a first come first serve. And now I'm all caught up with all the ones we've had sent in. So if you send something to us this week, you make it featured next week. Remember, they don't have to be finished. It can just be a yep. work in progress. So far, people have sent us all finishes, but a whip is great. Like whatever you want to show expose and talk us, about. Yeah, expose mm -hmm. us to different designers and stuff because that's how, that's how people find people. Yeah, I love, like, that's why I like floss tube. I love to see what people are stitching because it's beautiful, but I also love thinking like, oh, I would stitch that. And then that's how I've gotten into apparently thinking about doing haves and. <laughs> apparently not thinking about it. Apparently, never, it. apparently I'm doing it. So thank you. So that's featured friends. Mm -hmm. On to the next, we have whips. Go ahead. I've talked a lot. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, I had to, I had everything organized in the other room and I had to switch it. My whippies, let's see, the, I'll show you the least progress one, but I did a little bit that I had spun on my wheel. I did better last week than I did the week before, but still not all of them. Oh. I'm working still on my Things of Summer by Alicia Paulson. And I did this ice drink. A drink, you um, started that last week. Yeah, I just filled it in. Whoops, I'm ready to go. Cute. I have a little bit of white to do on the top of that straw. That's it. Nice. But anyway, it's coming along. Whoop. <laughs> what was that? That was my curtain. I'm like trying to adjust oh. the light because I'm right oh. in front of the window, but the curtain is closed. So that got a little, I was going to work on this more. I didn't stitch on Friday. I didn't stitch on Thursday night because I was getting ready because we were leaving early Friday morning. 
and so I didn't stitch Thursday night and I did not stitch at all on Friday. So that was two days that I didn't stitch, which was kind of shocking actually. I mean, I, I was like, wait a minute. I, I guess I did do a little bit more than I thought. I did work on my snow garden. The Blackbird's design, and it it's not those colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you saying that from before. Um, and I'm doing mine because of the fabric that I dyed. I think I'm doing mine one over two. So I just did this big snowflake here. I did a little bit in here. And I'm getting ready to move down underneath here. There's a there's this um, plant. Oh, yeah. Pretty. So it's not a very big pattern, but that border does take some time and doing it over and the holes are hard to see because this fabric is pretty grungy, but it is really pretty. I like the lacy look. I mean, I love the look of it in the, on the pattern page, but I also like the more muted mm -hmm. lacy look. So that got some love. And I started the other Barbara Anna, the Dreaming of Frida. Oh yeah. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> Just throw those projects around. Okay. <laughs> I have the chair raised so high I can hardly reach the floor. So this is the you can't really see it. It's a cactus and some flowers and some keys right there and a little tiny kitty cat. I had said that I was going to do mine on this blue. Mm -hmm. I started the cactus. Oh, that's cute. Now there's a, the only blue I was worried about that's in the flosses is in here. And it's, it does blend in quite a bit. I mean, it, it, you can oh, kind on of- On the edge of the cactus? I mean, I yeah, can see there's stitching there. Yeah, so there's more of that color in the pattern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap it out for a little darker. Yeah. But it's okay for the cactus. Whoopsie. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's cute. The second um the second clue came out and it's really cute. I didn't even show you. I'm not gonna show it because I don't want to ruin it for people. But she's doing the, the clues for this will come out on the first and the 15th of each month. And I think there's gonna be five clues. I have a new start. Do I know about this new start? Well, I texted you a picture one night, but you never responded. Oh, I started this one. Oh, yes, I did know you started it, but I don't remember the text. Sarah stitched this one and finished it last year, and then she passed the stash to me. I really want to have to show it, but I'm intimidated by the plans that I have. Oh, <laughs> I actually did. I mean, it goes kind of, you know, it's again, it's the little motif stitching that's so fun. Mm -hmm. So I did the upper. Yeah, it goes fast. If you and just look at candy, border, I did part of the border as I went along. Yeah, I was going to say, do that's what I did. I did a little border uh -huh. and then I would stitch the motifs yeah. in a little border. And that actually helped me not make mistakes on the border yeah. as well. I think I messed up. No, I didn't. I was thinking I messed up a color in here, but I didn't. I think the pattern shows the orange more red. Yes. That well, the um picture there uses a some kind of over dyed thread there. It does. And there's a note on the back. So you can always oh. figure out which one they used. And oh, I didn't that. see that. Okay. Anyway, I, I might I might try oh, it. I think does it call for a red, but it's actually orangey in the picture or something? It's red in the picture, but it calls for an orange, but I didn't yeah, see that. I think it's a variegated. Oh, one. here she says, I replaced orange by one variegated thread. I chose sunset by Nina's threads. That's, so. yes, that's, did you so just I ended up doing it with a DMC. The DMC orange, or did you pick a red? Orange, I think. Just what, as called? There is a red in there, right? The tractor and everything is red, but I think I right. stitched with the as, I just think I did everything called for. Yeah. Anyway, so I got that started because I it was so cute. And I did not work on my joyful world, but I needed to get some hours going on my whip go, which was my hoity toity. And I, I know I made a face about it last week because I had left my hoity toity in quite a state of disarray last time I worked on it and a fit. 
but I took the time to figure out because I was ripping out all this. I had all this mistake Aww. up in here. So I ripped it and ripping out black and I'm doing this one over two on a 25 count. It's tiny. One over a two, one thread over two squares. Two yeah. squares. Yeah. No. No, it would be tiny. Otherwise, oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing it one over one. I'm not the one I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. So I did those two patchwork squares and I did all of that. Cute. Yeah. I like that black. I mean, it just looks mm -hmm. really like and actually I didn't realize it. I'd forgotten. I'm doing anchor black. I went ahead and got the anchor black because everybody says the anchor black gives better coverage. Hmm. It is pretty good coverage, but that took me four hours. Four hours to do that little bit but the number of stitches that's a huge number of stitches i know and there's a lot of there's like one two three four colors in these two little blocks down here mm -hmm. there's two colors in each of these two little leaves wow. and there's black and then i had some of this vine or branch or whatever but you know when i started working on it and i thought now i know why i like this so much it is really cute it i like cute. it and then the last thing I worked on, <clears throat> sorry, is um, my dreaming girl. And I was just getting ready to sit down and work on it some more when I texted Sarah and said, hey, when do you want to floss it? So I haven't stitched on it today, but I did a little bit. What? I didn't her. She's really wrinkled. I didn't fold her. Oh. I didn't roll her up. You scrunched her in there? I scrunched her in there. Aww. So I did, let me fold her a little bit so I can show you. Hold on. I did these flowers underneath her hair. And then I did, I don't know if I done these flowers last week. Um, I some them. of the stems or something. Yeah. You, you're not changing the colors on the flowers. They're no, uh -uh. Yeah. and then I did the, I started these little orange flowers yesterday at Sarah's house. I love those yellow oh. orange ones. I know, and I like the way the yellow is showing up. I don't, for some reason, I did not like the yellow in her shirt, but I like it elsewhere. And after doing so many of these muted flowers down in here, it was fun to get some pop of color going. Mm -hmm. She's going to get worked on tonight because I'm kind of in the mood for her. Fun. So that's it. That's all my. Do you want to show your knitting? Do you have it handy? Oh, I do have my knitting. I do have it right here, actually. Oh, I told you I was not going to yawn and then I just did. I'm working on that sweater. Let me tell you what the name of it is real quick. Because I always forget what it's called. Me too. Uh, it's in my books. I saved it in my books. It's called, oh, for pity's sakes. She's like a rainbow. And I have about an inch. <clears throat> And I have to go inch and a quarter to go on the body because I've been knitting down. And then there's a little bit of a garter band at the bottom hem, a garter hem. So here's the back of it. Cute. I've done most of underneath the arm down this mm -hmm. week. And I've realized I made a mistake because after you start knitting down in here, you're supposed to be increasing a couple more times to give it a little more flare, but I don't think it's going to matter on her. Mm -mm. It's not like and, a sweater where you want it fitted a specific way to your body. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. It's the baby. She'll be laying around in it probably. Anyway, and I realized at first I thought, oh man, she doesn't have you knitting a button band or anything. So it's just going to keep rolling in. I thought it was a knit as you go. And then I looked, at, I thought I'm going to have to iron that out and put a ribbon to hold it. And I thought, I looked at the directions again. Oh, no, you have to pick up a knit and Picking up button bands, I've never done a very good job. I don't know why I can't seem to get it. Sarah showed me again last night how to do it. So I'm going to give it a try. But I think I'm also going to put a little ribbon just to give it a little more stability. Mm -hmm. That'd be cute. I found a YouTube video. I haven't watched it yet, but maybe not up here in the lace work, but I'll do it down in here. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's coming along and the sleeves won't take very long because they're just itty bitty sleeves, little bitty yeah. arms. Yeah. That's that's my little knitting sweater. I love love that lace work. Mm -hmm. That is really sweet. So that's yeah. I knit all the way home today. 
And we did have some great traffic part of the way, so. And crazy drivers. I know. Crazy drivers that are in a big fat hurry to get nowhere. I know. Your dad was feeling a little a little irritated about it too a couple of times. Don't be crazy drivers. Just drive normal people. I know. And the funny thing is, is like, you know, they're passing you and then you end up stuck right behind them when the traffic comes to a stop. They didn't even get they didn't get very far. Oh, I know. They're not going to get where they're going any faster than you are. Yeah. Anyway, also, my that's sweater next since that's what so this is the sunday sweater by Ginny schiller there's her name right there so you can go find it um and i'm knitting it teeny tiny in a preemie size i i'm knitting her zero to three month directions but with smaller needles and finer yarn so i think it'll be somewhere a little bit so it might just be newborn but it might be a little bit smaller so here is where i'm at i oops this is folded up i'm gonna um block it so that it lays yeah. flat so I have the bodice done and this little lace panel on the front. The little eyelets are so cute. It's very cute. It's so cute in person too. It's so lacy and- I know, it's just cute. tiny, it's so tiny. Here's the little sleeve and then <laughs> I love how it kind of, you, you do a little tiny decrease right before you do the band so that it sort of gathers and I think yeah. it makes it just look poofy and cute. So I'm currently knitting the other sleeve. And then what you do, I do think you pick up, like you were just saying, now I'm trying to think. Actually, no, this button band is knit mm -hmm. in. So I don't think I have to do what you were just describing, but I do have a little, they do, she does have you knit a little yoke, I guess, a little collar or yoke along the top. If you look and see she does. if you can tell. Yes, so, and then it matches up somehow with the button band. You cannot tell at all in this picture, but oh, okay. it will, right now it's just rolls kind of backwards. So I will yeah. have some stitches to kind of go back and pick up and finish. And then I have a little buttons to add and then I'll block it and it'll be done. So and cute. Hopefully it will still fit her by the time I get it all finished. <laughs> but yeah, I love that sweater. I knit it once before for the bigger girls, one of my bigger girls and Millie's watching me knit it and says, oh, I want, I want one of those mom. Yeah. So I thought I, think, it sizes it. I think it goes up till 10. Yeah. yeah. So it's like zero to three all the way up through a size 10. And of course I could just probably knit it longer for my little munchkins. And that's really at this point until they really start developing in the chest area, they don't change much in the chest area. So just make sure the that we're long arm. enough in the length. Yeah. They're pretty like slender little girls. So they're not like um, out likely to outgrow it. There was something I was going to say. She really wants a sweater with a hood, but I think I could take that pattern and instead of just knitting a little collar from here, just yeah. keep knitting and make it into a hood. Yeah, and then the, other hood patterns. Yeah, I would. That wouldn't be hard for me to do at all because I know what I basically know what I'm doing. Uh huh. Since I knit so many of those little hoods for my Etsy shop, so I'm very familiar with. And you've done some other baby sweaters that have hoods on them. I have, yeah. So even if I needed to go back and look at some of those, I could definitely adapt the pattern. So I'm kind of thinking I might see if she wants me to do that. Mm -hmm. That'd be cute. Ready. Yeah. As far as my cross stitching goes, I actually thin it. This was one of my whip go pieces. I forgot to mention that earlier. So my April whip go piece for the Lily Violet is done. Check, check. Check, off. check. check. And then I'll just show the other one. This was, this is my other one. And I think I will finish it very soon. It is Things of Autumn from Alicia Paulson. So it's the same series as the one you were doing. Yeah. Um, not summer. And as you will see, when I show you, I finished this notebook paper and this oak leaf this week. Did and notebook I paper. Oh. Did it. It's all done. French knots and all and the pencil. And then I, so now I have just the pumpkin and this candle and the boots. And wow. I think I might have a couple of these little diamond additions. And then I think I'm done, but I better double check. I think so. Like yeah. So here's where I am at on all those little motifs. You did a lot this week then, because you were already talking about not wanting to do the notebook paper last week. I know. I did that basically in one evening. And then I did the oak leaf and it's back stitching another and started the pumpkin before going to bed. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, pumpkin, candle, boots, and then I think just diamonds in one or two spots. And then mm -hmm. it's done. Yeah. 
and all ready for me to, I'll just frame it on sticky board and I have a white frame that I pop those in. Mm -hmm. And that's the last one of the series. I'll have done all four of them at that point. Yeah. Which is fun. So then I have a new one to display each season when I decorate. So that's my last whip, go, my April whip go. And I'm pretty sure I'll finish that this month. And then as for my plant, like last week, I decided to spin and been on my little tiny decisions app. So I have all of them entered in based on whatever I wanted to stitch kind of for the theme of each day of the week. Mm -hmm. And I really did stick to it, which I was proud of myself. Yeah. Not that it's that big a deal, but it did get my hands on several different right. things. And so I worked on Monday from Merry Monday. I don't know, I don't, Mitten Monday, I don't know what we call it, but. I don't have the picture. I left it on the table in there, but I worked on my snapper land, which was my um, whip go last whip go last week. Last month. I think I just did some border or something. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I didn't work on that because I'm looking at it thinking, well, I marked it down like I worked on it, but it doesn't look different to me than when I showed it last time. I'm just trying to get credit. Maybe I didn't actually work on that one. Now I can't remember. That was all the way back to last Monday. Who can remember Monday? <laughs> check that I actually worked on this too. I like to forget my Mondays. <laughs> oh yeah, I did work on this. <laughs> Maybe I didn't work on this. What am I? I think I worked on this a little bit. No, doesn't look different. Here I was feeling like so proud because I was thinking, oh, I worked on all of those, but now I'm. Oh no. Oh, no. I don't know if you'd started the top of the. I think I had. You know what? I don't actually, maybe not because I needed to tear out and put back in something I had ripped out. And I think maybe I did. You, maybe you tore out. Yeah, I think maybe I was, I ripped and then put back in. I think that is what I did that night. And then I think I went from that to working on Lily Violet. So I was trying to finish my whip go one for that one. So you didn't really do Snapperland. <laughs> so that one, I don't think I did Snapper. I think I didn't do Snapperland. I must have worked on Lily Violet or something instead on that day. But I know for sure that I did work on my Snow Queen because I remember working on my Snow Queen. So Snow Queen is Mirabilia, this amazing, gorgeous dream of a piece. And I'm stitching it on 32 count Belfast. Gothic is the colorway. And I have it on my, what are these called? Q snap. So you can't, and I loosened it, so I'm gonna tighten it back up a little bit. This doesn't look like anything yet, but this is the front of her dress and then the, you know, the floor or the sweep of mm -hmm. it along the ground. And so I worked on all of this and I did have to tear out some things here because what I didn't realize until we were talking in the middle of the week that there's an error on the pattern and the um, shaded areas that indicate where the pattern is technically supposedly overlaps doesn't actually overlap. So the shaded pattern is stitched one time, you know, you stitch it and then, yeah. I didn't know that when I had done some of this. And so I think I had like, actually, I think, yeah. So you can see my- I'm memory. right about that. You I, are, know I looked it up, you are right about it. Okay. And I looked at the pattern and I could tell, oh yeah. Okay, good. Two. And so I ended up needing to undo a few, but I didn't put them back in. I was so eager to start with these water lilies. Okay, so what happened was I bought this pattern for Sarah for Christmas. No, for your birthday. Yeah, for my birthday. But I bought her some of the threads and stuff for Christmas to fill in what I couldn't get at her birthday. But when I bought it at my local needle, needlework store, I was pretty sure she told me, and it was on a sticky note on my desk forever, that the shaded areas aren't really what we think they're supposed to be, like she just explained. But then I started thinking, did I really? Yeah. I, anyway, I told her about it and then luckily she was able to find it online. So and I, I guess think you probably mentioned it to me when you gave it to me and I just didn't remember it. You weren't, yeah, you weren't working on it. Did you just Google errata for that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I Googled that, but I'm not sure if that pulled it up, but I eventually figured out I Googled uh, errors or okay. errors for Snow Queen. And there's actually a website where there's all the errors listed in a table for all any Mirabilia. So you know your pattern number and you can find it on just this like table 
that's good to know which yeah so if you i can see if i can find it again and post it in the um descriptions let yeah. me that would be probably a good thing to link to yeah i will link to it let me not note it down really quick um errors i mean i assume if people are working on mirabilia they probably already know that i'm such a newbie but you know if you're also oh, but there might be newbie, other newbies though there might be so if there are and you are one of them you might want to double check. Excuse well, me. I have that other Mirabilia that's the ring around the rose tree that I want to you start. might want to double Probably. check yeah. to make sure there's no errors on it. My first Mirabilia. So I will try and find that um, link again and post it in our show notes for this episode that you can find, especially if you're if you're watching on a TV app like Roku, then you it's harder to find. But if you go into yeah. a computer or your phone, yeah, you can find the show notes pretty easily just underneath the video if you have your screen. Um, I can't pull up comments when it's on my computer. Really? It just spins and spins and spins. Oh, there's some like glitch. Must be. I've never been able to. I have to do it on my phone. The pattern got kind of bent. That's sad. Hello or something from somebody sleeping on the couch got set on top of it. Um, I worked this week. I pulled out my Barbara Burjo Richards friends. Here, I'm going to straighten it out, even though the picture is crooked on the leaflet. But I have totally, I have totally changed the colors on this uh -huh. to my own colors, and I'm a little. Some of them are a little the same. I'm a little on the fence about the red. I bought, I got the variegated. I was really excited to try this. I think I just need to make sure I'm using more of the brighter part. Mm, yeah, it's pink. Let's see if I can get the colors. See how there's some that's much yeah. darker. And I think I just need to make sure I'm using part of the thread that's on the brighter spectrum because I don't love just the dark. It won't matter on when I stitch the barn on the piece, but for like these little flowers, they ended up just showing up almost brown. I'm tempted to pull oh, them out. You might want something a little brighter. It's, a, it's not quite as dark as that in person, but my lighting is, here you go. There. So you can see the red, but I think I might, pull those yeah, up to do a little, yeah, a little brighter but i am going to do the barn in that red and i think it won't matter as much like i think the variegation will be fine mm -hmm. so this week i worked on all the um framing kind of around her it's this i started this border the the this, arbor the light border here this brown yeah. and then the beginning of the arbor yeah um I was really trying to make sure I counted carefully. I thought I had made a mistake on her, but when I'm counting it over again, I'm not sure I did. So maybe okay. I was making, so pulled her out, got a little bit done. Doesn't look like much, but Every little orders, bit orders are always something, right? Yep. And then I worked, a, oh, like this is probably not even worth showing, a minuscule amount on this, but I love this piece so much. Mm -hmm. And I modified the colors a little bit just because I didn't have all the called for. She calls for crescent colors, which are now, what are they? Classic color works. Classic color works, yeah. And so I just didn't have those and I wasn't going to invest a ton in this. So I just kind of used some of the things in my stash mm -hmm. that I have on here, but I worked on some of the letters there. I'd really like to focus on this one in May. It's fun to stitch on this mm -hmm. Ada. Ada is nice to stitch on. Yeah. The last thing that I put some stitches in is my gathering eggs from Nora Corbett. Ooh. And I've been working on the side of the fill in around her so that I got a lot of this purple. Let's see if I can. Um, I want you to stop for a second. So not don't stop recording, but stop talking. So she worked on that yesterday when I was working on my piece at the table. Stop. And I just want you to see, this is how Sarah's floss was on the table. See that? Well, okay, so I'm using this project. She pulls her floss out and then starts digging around in it, trying to no. find the right color. Well, normally it's not a huge <laughs> deal. I have to tell you, like, there's only like a few greens and a few yellows. So, and I recognize like if it's going to be 725, I'm mm -hmm. going to find it pretty easily and pull it out. Really? But if I'm sitting in lighting that's not great, the pink makes the colors hard to distinguish. So I dumped them all out so that I could see them. 
Not a big deal. No, but that would drive me crazy. On my big projects like that, they are in lost of ways. Or at the very minimum, I would bobinate them and put them on a ring. That, I mean, if I only have like 10 colors, I don't always floss. But I'm usually, I pick one and I work on that one color for quite a while. So I usually just pull out the one or two that I'm like this. Okay. Good luck it, with that with your hate. I will definitely have a better system for the hate. And I should <laughs> probably get floss aways for those. But I have all the floss aways for all my organization. I'm tired of doing floss organization. So this it's is what I'm at. I got yeah, this purple so pretty. and some of this green and this white lily or whatever those are. Yeah, yeah, or hyacinth or hosta or I don't know what those are. Lily, some kind of a lilies. Thing, like a stargazer or a yeah. white stargazer. I think these are beads. I think the little black, um, uh -huh. oh, I just learned the term for those. What is anther? The little black uh -huh. anthers are yeah. um, beads. So I won't fill those in until later. I had to have a chuckle, by the way. I was watching Julie from Stitching at the Cabin and she was showing something she was going to be doing or something she'd already done. And she's like, yeah, I have beads there because I don't do French knots. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you. I'm not the only one that used, I mean, I don't, I can do them now, but I wouldn't want to do like a ton of them all in a row. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Well, okay, next time I'll have my floss is organized for this piece. You have to see, I looked up and there's just the table just got this mound of floss that she I was looking down. for like a yellow in particular and the way the lighting from this pink bag was hitting in it, I couldn't I'm, see. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll get organized. It, it, it works for you. I don't want to organize. I spend all my life it's organizing. Fine. My children and my husband are slobs and I just spend my time cleaning up after them all the time. You can leave it that way, but I just wanted to be full disclosure about how we do things around here. That's everything I stitched. Oops. Well, that was quite, quite a bit too. Yeah. I, considering how busy of a week I feel like I had yeah. really stitch a lot in the evenings. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have stitched in the car, but oh, there's no way I could stitch in the car anymore. Yeah. No way. No way. So. Do you have any haul? Because I do not. I do. Actually, it came when I got home today. So I had shown, I didn't start it, but I'm going to see it here. Last week when I showed these cute little snapshots by Pine Mountain, the little monthly pictures, mm -hmm. I did go online and get may june and july and they are pretty cute and this idea came from carolyn Zook from sea Zook stitch but i took them out of plastic so this is july that little boy holding the flag oh cute this does not thrill me about stitching that's that's a lot but i love the fireworks if you do so the letters and then outline it no big deal oh i know it's just I just looked at it and I thought, Ooh. but I love the whole overall piece of it. And then this is May and it's pastel. And it's interesting because when Carolyn was talking about these, she said, yeah, they use the mostly DMCs. Well, the first two that I bought were April and May, March and April. And there was a lot of gentle art I showed mm -hmm. last week. These three that I just bought, they're all DMC. So this is May. It's kind of a softer oh. bicycle. It's kind of mom feel to it mm -hmm. and then I really like I really like green he's cute and there's a lot of stitching on these too like oh look at this cute little pillow yeah look at that cute little bear oh but like that trailer and that car and I mean the, and those mountains yeah. that's a lot but yeah I thought they were cute that is cute yeah I mean next year when you finish your joyful world you should do those yeah I don't think I'll do them all in one piece though. I don't know if they're all the same size. I should look that up. Mm -hmm. I could maybe do them all in one. If they were all the same size, it'd be easy to put them on one piece. Yeah. So that's really all my haul. I don't think I, oh, I got my magazines from Sarah because she oh, bought yeah. me the World of Costuching. I hadn't gotten the last two. So if you're looking for them, this is what they look like. This one is April. It is? Oh. Yep. And this one's March. March and April. 
Okay. And I'm pretty sure if you want to know what's in them, I'm not going to, we're not going to do one of these, but Carolyn Zook did a flip through, hmm. I believe. She does it usually every month. I think she just did this one. Anyway, fun stuff in there. Cute, cute magazine. That's it. No okay. fabric, no nothing, no, nothing here. Well, oh no, I have stitchy kindness, actually. I just remembered. I was just thinking only about stores and purchasing, but last week after I shared about hoping that someday I would stitch the Haid for An the Annie Stegg Haid and it's called Thumbel the Traveler. Tiny Traveler. It's a Thumbelina scene. And I think I showed a picture of it just like on my phone last time, which isn't great, but I got a, I didn't check to make sure she was okay with this. So I won't say who, but I got somebody, a friend was watching and contacted me and asked if they could purchase that pattern for me because the Hades were all half off. I don't know if they still are, but if they are and you're interested in buying a Hade pattern, you should go look because they may still be um, on sale. In fact, I could research it really quick. That's right. That didn't happen until after we filmed. I was thinking yeah. you already shared that. Hey, I've been alluding to your aid that you're going to start and you. Oh yeah. We didn't really talk about it yet. Yeah. Um, here, I'm going to double. I'll tell you if it's still on. I don't think it is. I think it was only till the ninth or something. Wasn't it? I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. So I'm sorry if you missed it. I would have missed it too. But she bought me the tiny traveler chart. So I have it stored away and I'm starting to think about starting that. So send help. I don't know what I'm doing. I do. I did decide I will get the, what's it called? The gr Grid. um, gridded, gridded. the gridded fabric so that I can do a 10 by 10 square like they recommend in the pattern. But oh my gosh, this pattern is like the actual chart is like 79 pages long. <laughs> what am I doing? I think dense, kind of dense dark. pages. I figured out that I think if I bought all the floss, it's probably, what did I figure? I kind of was doing the math, but I don't know how many skeins of some of them I need, you know, like I need to go back and look. That's true. Yeah. But it's, it's still an investment, but mm -hmm. I think I will want to start it this year. Maybe not. I, I'm sort of on the fence about whether to try it this year or whether I should just make that like a big fun thing that I start in 2022 and try to get some of my bigger pieces done this year. I'm, a, I'm not a little bit on the fence about it. Yeah. But thank you so much, friend, for, for gifting me that pattern. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. I am really excited about it. I do really like stitching big designs more than I think I like stitching just tiny quick things because I'm not a big finisher. So I like to stitch these little designs, but then they just sit and I never do anything with them. Whereas big ones keep me busy for a lot longer. And then I'm yeah. like, do I have to get this framed? I think that also the mandalas have been on sale. Hmm. So if you're thinking about a mandala, man, mandala, mandala, you might want to check them out. And I, I think Julie from Stitching with the Cabin mentioned that the gal that does those either retired? I think she might have passed away, and so the daughter has been mm -hmm. keeping it up, and she, they, nobody knows if she's going to keep doing it. So it was like, if there's a mandala that you really want, you might want to think about getting it because when I guess when they're gone, they're gone, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, might want to check into that if that's something that is on your bucket list to do. I would, yeah, I won't do a mandala. I would, I would, if I had to pick to do a big one, I would pick a mandala, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, I got enough big things to do. I could, I could see doing one of those someday too. They're beautiful. They're, beautiful. they're yeah. They're so intricate. So, do you have plans for next week? I have plans. I did spin my little tiny decisions app because that did help me this last week, kind of not have decision fatigue when I would sit down and want to stick. Mm -hmm. So this week, I'm hoping I can finish the things of autumn, and that would be the end of my things of go and the end of the things of. So one of my whip go squares was to finish all of the things of series from Alicia Paulson. And this is my last one. So I will have already finished that yeah. entire square if I can finish that this week, which I think I can. Okay. Um, yeah. And I had planned to stitch kind of um, according to some 
categories. So we have like Merry Monday. So I usually stitch wintry on Monday and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then I stitch sort of randomly on Tuesday and Thursday. Friday, I'll stitch um, floral or fall. Yeah, I think we kind of left it open to what it was. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Floral or fall. Uh-huh. And Saturday, I'll stitch spring and Sunday, I'll stitch summer. So this week, I was going to work on that quarry, Ibati quarry. It's the little elf. Christmas one. That ginger, kind of that gingerbready looking house. It's a big piece. That, that could be a big piece. Dreaming Girl is on Tuesday. Snow Queen is on Wednesday again. I have a big dimensions kit. It's a big like kind of landscape scenery that I would really love to finish. So that is actually popping on Thursday. Friday is Things of Autumn if I haven't already finished it. Saturday, I'm supposed to work on that Fresh from the Garden piece that I love. And then that's, that's all I spend for. Um, and then I also am wanting to figure out this week what I'm doing for Mania. I'm batting around several ideas and the one we were most recently talking about is maybe just doing like a big, big ass project, the BAP, uh, yeah. BAP um, mania, because I have several, we have, we both have some Hawk Run Hollows and I have that Dimensions and I have this Gathering Eggs that to me is a big project. Um, and then I do really want to finish that Joyful World sometime, some in my life. And I'm really not that far. I would consider that a big project to be able to finish. Oh yeah, so it's been project. around this idea of trying to really work on some of those big projects and then I'll be more free yeah. in my brain to start maybe a new one or two. Yeah. Oh, and my Hawk Run Hollow, my Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, I would consider that one of those big projects. So I'm thinking about making those like focal pieces through the week. Maybe I'll look through my stash and see if I have anything on hand that would be kind of a fun motivator on the weekend to start, like either little kits or freebies or something in a magazine yeah. that I could easily get supplies for. Um, yeah. So I'm still in the process, but that's one of my plans is to kind of nail that down because, oh my goodness, May is almost here. Almost here. Which again, mind blowing, mind blowing to me how fast yeah. this year is going. Yeah. Um, I think I spun my wheel. So I, I did a little better last week, but um, my week was off anyway. Uh, and so this week when I spun my things of summer, hmm. Alicia Paulson came up again for tonight. Um, my Blackbird Design Snow Garden came up twice. So I'm working on that Monday and Wednesday. Hmm. Joyful World came up as my Tuesday. It's also my whip go. And it's also just one that I'm going to do every month anyway. So maybe I'll make a point to just work on that one. No, I'm, I, sometimes I work on two or three little things an evening. If I'm, mm -hmm. if I've got a long stretch, I'll do a little bit here, a little bit there, but that one, maybe that night I'll just work on that one. Um, and then I have shown a few episodes back because I spun it on my wheel that I've got some shepherd's bush kits that are little scissor fobs. There's like a little sheep on a hill and there's a floral one. And so there's two of those. So that came up for Thursday and Friday, um, squirreling around by Miss Purcell came up, which is the acorns and the squirrels. Good one. Was, yeah. that and that's an easy one. That's easy. And then Saturday was, is the last day would be my Barbara Richard Burjo gathered in love, which is the girl silhouette. She's holding a big basket of flowers with a little cat sitting in it. I'm really not that far from finishing that one. It's a little farther than I'd like. I've got that whole arch to do, like her. And there's a lot of backstitching in her. But yeah, I mean, if I just worked on her and really put some good time into her, I would make some good progress. And then I still need to do two more hours on my hoity toity by the end of the month. Hmm. Mm -hmm. so my whip go goals was Joyful World, <clears throat> which at six hours would easily take care of April. Mm -hmm. And then my hoity toity. So those are what I'm working on. My other plan is to finish that baby sweater this week. Yeah. And I think I've, I've been, you know, I was toying around with lots of ideas for mania too. And then Sarah and I were talking and <clears throat> I started thinking it would be kind of nice to focus on <clears throat> a couple of my bigger pieces. Like I've got two Hawk Run Hollow. So maybe at first I thought maybe I would do two weeks focused on one of them and two weeks on the other one. But I also um, had some other bigger ones. Um, so I'm not sure, but I would let myself do new starts 
on the weekend. And again, maybe one new start for two weekends and another new start for two weekends. So I'd only have two new starts. I have no business doing like 15 new starts. I've done that a couple of years in, well, last year I did, I did kind of a whip mania, but the year before I did new starts and I don't want to do that um, this time around. So it'll be some kind of a whip mania, but I kind of like the idea of doing the big ones because my hawk runs don't get spun. They don't get spun very often and they're on my whip go, but that's only probably twice, each of them twice for the month, for the year. Yeah. So they need more love than that. Mm -hmm. um, especially when I look at <clears throat> how fast Carolyn Zook is whipping through that spring one. Excuse me. I know. Is she on the fifth or sixth square? I can't remember now. Wow, she's uh, kind of motivated me to think, okay. My Christmas one, I tend to work on more because it's over two threads. My mm -hmm. year in Hawkburn Hollow is over one. You know what I think, sorry, I was just thinking about another thing about that. If I do that heaven and earth design, the hate, I think I will maybe look into getting a lap or floor scrolling journey. Um, which I don't currently have, but I also am not going to spend $300 on one. So if anybody's watching this and has tips for a really nicely affordable, for a mom who doesn't have a lot of money because she just spent it all on birthday presents. Um, I'm just joking, but I, I found a few on Amazon. So if you've bought one on Amazon that you like, like maybe there's one that sort of sticks under your, either your cushion or your leg, I guess, probably your cushion would be the more comfortable. And then it comes up and over but it had mixed reviews. And so I don't really, and it was only like 40 to $50. It wasn't like very expensive, but so if that, you know, if somebody has one that they've had good experiences with on Amazon, I, you know, I'm going to listen and trust people. Like I actually interact with more than just like random Amazon viewer. Or, I, I wonder if you almost need to have them on those scroll rods rather than on a lap stand. Well, that's, I know that's what I'd have to decide. Cause you're going to have so that's a big piece. I know. Yeah. I, I feel like people that are doing those. Really I probably need a floor one. So if you know of like affordable floor frame type options, let me know. Cause I really am not just going to spend $300 on myself on this. I just won't. And maybe there's like a website of people like a selling website, people that are selling other than just on Facebook, like, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stash. Yeah, maybe stash whatever stash unload. unload i wonder if there's some community pages out there that where people are getting rid of stuff that want to sell it yeah so this like huge project idea is brand new to me so give me all your tips and tricks as i think about yeah. how to go about it yeah um that's all i got giveaway did we we decided we were going to do that. oh we do have a little giveaway remember out of my magazine so i this is adorable but I have other things that I will stitch before I will stitch this. So in my World of Cross Stitching magazine, they always send cute little kits. And so I would love to give away this. It's a bookmark and card. So it's like a bookmark you can make somebody and it's on, it's on Ada and then they give you a card frame and it's this cute. I don't want to open it, but they give you the floss, they give you everything. And it's like, there's a kitty, plants, books. Mm -hmm. cute little little craft boxes it's really cute and they give you everything you need so yeah. um since it's a bookmark just tell us what you're reading yeah which I'll is say cool. the book i'm reading just use the word book but in that sentence tell us what you're reading i did break down i don't know if i said this last week i really wanted to read that Maisie dobbs but i wasn't reading my hardback because of the lighting in our bedroom at night so i broke down and bought it on like kindle Oh, even though I, it was like $10. Um, so I'm hoping to, I started it, but I'm not very far in it. So, but that's what I'm reading this week. But had I finished, I had finished Spindle's End last week. This week I'm picked up, um, oh, well, I'm reading two things. I'm going to read one for a little while and the other for a little bit, like very little while. Um, the fun thing I'm reading, the really lighthearted thing I'm reading is the, um, second book in the Mysterious Benedict Society series, which my girls are reading in love. And I read the first one and I thought it was fun. Um, they're kind of just a, I don't know how to describe them. They're very quirky and they're about these kids who are really smart or have sort of these, they're not like special superpowers, but they're kind of gifted. Mm -hmm. um, 
and they're sort of solving some world crisis in each book, yeah. it seems like. So anyways, I read the first one. The girls loved it. Jesse really liked it too. So I'm reading the second one now, but then I'm also reading, um, it's called Home, yeah, Home by Marilyn Robinson. And she's the author who wrote Gilead and Lila. And then Jack is her newest one, which I got recently kind of for my birthday. What I used birthday money to buy it. Mm-hmm. But I'd had Home on my nightstand already. It, all four of them are basically books retelling the same events and story and relationships, but from one of the other person's perspectives. Oh. And th- so they're sort of slow and meandering and reflective, but really beautiful. So as I was reading this one, it's told from the perspective of a younger sister of a really rebellious older brother. Um, and they're both adults, like she's 39 or something like that. And I just love it. And it breaks my heart every time. It's just beautifully written and it occurred to me this week as I was reading it it's really the story I think of the prodigal son retold in multiple formats and multiple oh, yeah. perspectives and and so this I feel like this one is almost like glory is the main character and she's I would call her maybe the older brother in the parable of the prodigal son who is the rule follower and does everything right but it's really confused at the father's love for the one who went astray and it's just really gorgeous. Like her writing is just luscious. <laughs> I don't know. It's one, She's one of my favorite authors. But I can't read it very fast. So I'm reading like four pages a night. It's like mm-hmm. about all I can really get through because I'm tired and it's not like action packed. And yeah. 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 And I also can only handle like this much heartbreak at a time. <laughs> so um, really great. Yeah. If you've read anything by Marilyn Robinson and love it, let me know. If you haven't, you should check her out. She's really oh. wonderful. I don't think I ever, what was her first one she wrote? Um, uh, well, the first main one is Gilead. And it's told I, from the perspective of like an older man who's a, been a pastor. Yeah, it's not part of this series. It's not the same, as, oh, it is, okay, so there. It's kind of the first installment. And then Lila is a retelling of sort of the similar, their life together from the wife's perspective, from the woman's perspective. And his best friend is this other old pastor who lives in the same little town in the Midwest. And his name is Bowden, that's his last name. And his son is the one who's kind of the prodigal son. And so I'm I'm assuming the one I'll read next is from the perspective of Jack, who is the prodigal son, the one, the rebellious one, who's gone away and he's lived a rough life and he's been gone for 20 years and then he comes back. So the coming back is sort of the, where the story is retold. I think I had Gilead. I don't know if I read it, I, but I remember when it came out, it was very, very hype. I mean, it was, people were loving it. And I think it was back when I was doing a lot of book challenges online with my blogging. And I think I had it plugged into like several challenges, but I don't think I ever got to it. But I remember owning it. I don't think I own it anymore. I cleaned out a lot of books over the years when we were moving kids in and out of our house and I didn't have this shelving. Mm-hmm. thinking if I ever wanted to read it I could get it from the library or get it on my kindle or something yeah. I really do like reading on my kindle because it's so much easier on my eyes mm-hmm. um I can make the print as big as I need it to mm-hmm. so I think I'm I, I will still buy the Maisie Dobbs books in hardcover because I could read them during the day because mm-hmm. okay, I do want to reread all of them and I love having the hard copies of those um it's like the same thing with movies i You know, we have all this digital stuff out there, right? And like people, you know, we think, oh, my husband will say, but we don't need to buy that. We can always watch it on Netflix. But there are older movies that I really want to watch that are not ever streaming or they're, you have to pay. And I don't always want to pay. And I think, so I've gone and bought a lot of this, the DVDs of them, Mm -hmm. because then if I want to watch it, when I want to watch it, I can watch it. And it's, he, he looks at me, I mean, he's bought some digitally, but you can buy DVDs a lot cheaper than you can buy the digital version sometimes, you know, the older movies. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I feel that way about books. There are certain books that I just want to make sure I have a physical copy of in case I all of a sudden can't get it on. Because I don't know what will happen to Kindle books. Do they eventually take some out to put new ones in? I, I don't know. I haven't really ever heard of that, but I could see it happening. As far as I know, when you buy it, you own that digital version of that book. Right. But I mean, if you don't well, buy it, a library, right. but if you don't buy it right now, you're just thinking, oh, I'll get it later. Well, and then later you go back to get it and it's not there. 
yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of that really happening, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's a new world. I think it happened. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's about it. I need to yeah. go put my jammies on or something. I, I'm so tired all of a sudden. Yeah. I know. 5.30, people. 5.30. I'm going to put my jammies on. It's also warm in here. I need to take the sweater off. Yeah. But my my um, slip was showing when I sat down. Oh. I had to have that. But it just yeah. definitely warm. Yeah. So anyway, you guys. Have a great week. Yeah. Thanks we'll for being able to floss tube next week. You'll be home by Sunday. I'll next be home week. on Sunday. Yeah. On Friday, Millie and I are going on our, she's turning 10. And when my girls turn 10, we get to do a mother daughter getaway for a night. We're going up to the little, um, the little town up north of here called Leavenworth. And it's all styled as a Bavarian mountain, Bavarian village. And all the buildings are like it's a, definitely a tourist kind of ski destination in the in the winter and tourist and like all year round. So we are getting a little hotel room and we're staying up there and eating and having shopping and who knows what we'll do. Just enjoy the time together. Yeah. So, but I'll be back by Sunday. We're going Friday, Saturday. So we'll so. be back next week then. Yep. So we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and happy. Stay tuned.